Welcome to Health Insurance 101, brought to you by Protect Health. This is a comprehensive look at individual on exchange health insurance basics for brokers and agents. This training will help you understand the federal health insurance marketplaces as well as the state based exchanges. It will help you define who might be eligible for coverage and how to apply, discuss options for consumers with limited incomes, and describe the enrollment process. We will discuss what is a federal exchange or FFM and what is a state-based marketplace or SBM. We will discuss the operation of a marketplace and how consumers use those marketplaces. A health insurance marketplace provides health plans, shopping and enrollment services for individuals and families. At the marketplace, you can determine eligibility for coverage in marketplace plans, advanced premium tax credits, which go towards monthly premiums on behalf of consumers, cost sharing reductions that lower consumers out of pocket costs like deductibles, co-payments and co-insurance, determining Medicaid and CHIP eligibility as well as Nevada checkup. And some marketplaces also offer coverage for dental and vision separate from the health insurance. Let's first take a look at a federally operated marketplace. Some states may choose not to open a state-based exchange. In that case, they would rely fully on the FFM or federal system to manage all of the marketplace functions on their behalf. The consumers would use the FFM and not a state-based exchange website. A state-operated exchange is where the state manages all of the marketplace functions. These are called state marketplace, uh, state-based marketplaces or SBMs. Some states still use a hybrid. These are states that choose to have a state-based marketplace but do not choose to create their own sites and technologies, but instead rely on the federal government or FFM for that part of the process. These are still considered state-based exchanges. They still have control over their plans, carriers, and everything else, but they rely on the FFM for the technology to do all of the functions of the marketplace. Brokers and consumers can use the marketplace to apply for um, health insurance, fine plans, dental vision, uh, all on a single marketplace. Consumers are always encouraged to use a broker when they apply for coverage. These services are typically provided at no charge and it can help consumers enroll in the right plan. Brokers are almost always paid by the carriers directly, never by the consumers. And it's always in the best interest of the broker to find the plan that works best for the client, not the other way around. A broker is likely to not try to push anybody into a specific plan because they are generally paid very similarly or equally among the plans. They truly do have an interest in what consumers enroll in. Consumers in both FFM and state-based exchanges can find coverage on their own, and they can also use these exchanges to find out on their own if they're eligible for Medicaid and CHIP. Some individual health insurance companies also provide a co-op system that allows them to connect their site to the exchange, which allows consumers to enroll directly from that carrier's website. Consumers also have the option of using a web broker. However, it's always recommended that consumers who do want to enroll on their own go directly to an exchange. If they don't wanna use a broker, using a web broker is usually not the best idea because it's simply adding an additional point of failure to reach the same goal. The web brokers are going to offer the same policies, prices, and benefits, but in many of those cases with web brokers, they only offer certain plans and certain coverages, so they might have a goal of driving consumers to a specific plan, whereas where a regular broker would not. Let's go over the quali what a qualified health insurance plan is. A QHP is determined as a plan that carriers can sell on the marketplace. It does have marketplace minimum requirements, which we'll go over. It must have essential health benefits. There are 10 of those. And there are different health plan categories that have to apply. Those are bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. As well as catastrophic health plans. Again, we will dive into all of these. First of all, marketplaces offer marketplace plans and certify each marketplace plan sold in a state. Whether that marketplace is the FFM or the state-based exchange, that role is still the same. They have to certify each of those plans sold in their state. Health insurance companies can sell marketplace plans through the marketplace as long as they're licensed and in good standing with the state where the plan is sold. 
as long as they offer at least one silver level and one gold level plan category throughout each service area and those service areas in which the health insurance company offers coverage. In other words, they can't offer a gold plan in St. Louis, Missouri, but not offer it in St. Joseph, Missouri next door. Marketplace plans must include a minimum set of comprehensive benefits. These are known as essential health benefits or EHBs. They also must follow established limits on cost sharing, such as deductibles, co-payments, and out-of-pocket maximums, and they must meet all non-discrimination requirements, network adequacy requirements, and applicable state-specific requirements for your state-based marketplaces. It's important to note here that the federal government still controls the aspects and the oversight of all plans, whether it's on an FFM, state-based exchange, or a hybrid site. The health essential or the essential health benefits that must be included are the following 10 EHB categories. It must provide ambulatory patient services, such as doctor's visits and clinic visits, um, urgent care, things like that. It must offer emergency services like ambulance, first aid, rescue squad, uh, other options like that. It must include hospitalization with no limit on costs. It must cover maternity, newborn care, post and prenatal, all of the way from beginning to end. It also must include mental health and substance abuse, disorder services, as well as behavioral health treatments. They must offer prescription drug benefits and the formulary must meet specific requirements set forth by the federal government. It must include rehabilitative and habilitative services like therapy, wheelchairs, oxygen, and other medical equipment. It also must include laboratory services, lab work, blood work, things like that. There are certain blood works that uh, certain lab works that are part of the annual exam, which are included at no cost. It also must provide preventative wellness services and chronic disease management, like blood pressure screening and immunizations. And all of these are at no cost as well. All preventative well care is provided at no cost. Pediatric services in many states and the FFM, states are, uh, the plans are required to include dental and vision care for pediatrics, for minors under the age of 19. This varies state by state and by FFM state, but generally speaking, all plans will have vision and many will have dental. Companies can offer additional products and services in addition to these 10 essential health benefits. However, those benefits are optional for the provider and will not necessarily be provided by all of the providers in that market. So it may be a specific benefit by a specific carrier that may not be available in other carriers in the area. There are four, four levels of plans, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. And they are what you think they are. They are from most expense or least expensive, um, I'm sorry, least expensive, least benefit to most expensive, biggest benefit. But there is some variation here, especially when it comes to cost sharing, which we'll talk about a little bit more. A bronze level plan, generally speaking, must be a health plan that has an actual val actuarial value of 60%. Basically, that means that it must cover 60% of all coverages across all services until the deductible and out-of-pocket is met. A silver level is at 70%, a gold level at 80, and a platinum plan at 90. These can vary based on actuarial levels per plan, per region. There are certain rules that apply in some areas and others that don't. Um, I will also say that platinum plans are not sold on most exchanges anymore, simply due to the costs. Uh, they're not required to offer a platinum plan in many markets, so many companies do not. There are also catastrophic health plans. Now, with the way the marketplaces have worked over the past few years, catastrophic health plans are, generally speaking, no longer a value. But for people who choose them, um, they are basically a plan with a high deductible and lower premiums. It does have an ability to pay all the medical costs covered for care up to an annual limit um, and cost sharing for a specific year. And it must include at least three primary care visits per year and other recommended preventative services with no out-of-pocket uh, prior to the plan's deductible being met. It does protect consumers from high out-of-pocket expenses, but only young adults under 30 at the time they enroll or certain people with hardship affordability exemptions can qualify for them. Again, in most in most places in this country, 
bronze plan options will be better than catastrophic plan options. They are not commonly sold in the marketplaces at this point in time. We're gonna talk about eligibility enrollment basics. We're going to talk about who's eligible for coverage, affordability programs such as the premium tax credits, APTCs, and cost sharing reductions, as well as coverage options for American Indians and Alaskan Natives. So let's talk about who's available or who's, who's eligible for coverage through a marketplace. Individuals and households that are eligible must, one, live in the United States in a state served by a marketplace where they're, where they're applying. That's all 50 states, all counties. That's not a problem. They must be a U.S. citizen, U.S. national, or lawfully present immigrant for the entire time that they have coverage. It's important to note here there are certain statuses that appear they might be eligible but are not. For example, work permits, DACA, other immigration statuses do not qualify for plans. So it's always a good idea to verify with your exchange what those specific individuals do and don't qualify for. Also, people enrolling must not be incarcerated unless the pending disposition of charges will end prior to the effective date. Basically meaning if they're in jail now, but they'll be out of jail by the time the insurance goes into effect, then it's okay. Let's talk about advanced premium tax credits or APTCs. APTCs apply to consumers within certain household incomes who aren't eligible for qualifying coverage, like through a job or Medicare or Medicaid coverage or CHIP. They are eligible for savings through a marketplace, depending on their income. If a consumer has an annual income between 100 and 400 percent of the FPL or federal poverty level, they may qualify for APTCs. It is important to note that this 400 percent threshold is currently removed from implementation by the ARPA law passed in 2021, but it may return to its standard levels once the term of the ARPA law ends. Right now that law ends at the end of 2022. So depending on what time you're listening to this um, and watching this training, it may have already ended or may have been extended by Congress. Uh, but the, the law as it's written will give benefits for APTCs to those between 100 and 400% of the federal poverty level. Those numbers are available at sites like Kaiser Family Foundation, and you can Google um, FFM calculator to get those numbers and what the federal poverty level is in your state. Advanced premium tax credits are only available to consumers who enroll in a marketplace plan through the marketplace. In other words, they can't buy their own health insurance and then qualify for it when they file taxes. They must buy the plan through the marketplace. They can use some or all of their APTCs in advance to lower their premiums. So if a consumer gets a plan that costs $600 and their APTC is $500, that means they're left to pay $100 of their plan. They have a choice of not taking advantage of the full APTC. They can adjust that and pay none of it or use none of it or use an, only 200 of it and pay more for their plan. This might work for self-employed people who aren't exactly sure what their income is going to be for the year. It's not, not something most agents will do often, but it is available. If a consumer is ineligible, ineligible for Medicaid based on immigration status, they may be eligible to enroll in a marketplace plan with advanced premium tax credits, even if their income is under 100% of the federal poverty level um, or they're otherwise eligible. So this is really important because a lot of times people will apply for coverage that would normally be eligible, but immigration prevents them from um, getting Medicaid because they have not been here five years. They don't have enough income to qualify for a health insurance plan on their exchange, but once they apply for Medicaid and get declined, they now qualify, even if their income is under that 100% level. There is a lower threshold where they would be declined no matter what. Thankfully, that's a rare situation. There's an important piece of how health insurance works. It's called reconciling their APTC. This is something that happens when a consumer files their taxes at the end of each year. The amount of the APTC that a consumer is eligible for may change throughout the year. If there's changes the consumer, to the consumer's income, uh, their household size, immigration status, family status, they have to notify you as the broker or the marketplace of those changes. If they don't, they have huge tax liabilities they could be responsible for. When they file their income taxes, they will have to reconcile those APTCs that were paid to the health insurance company on their behalf 
and reduce their monthly premiums all year and say, stating that they were ultimately, el ultimately eligible based on their actual household income. So what I mean by that is if somebody said they were gonna make $20,000 during the year and they never called to change their income but ended up make, making $30,000, they're gonna owe money. So if they're determined, if a consumer is, who used the advanced premium tax credit is in excess of the amount they were determined eligible for, they would have to repay all or some of that difference when they filed their returns. So in other words, my example, if they said they were gonna make 20, but they made 30, and that would have raised the health insurance by 50 bucks a month, they'll have to pay back 50 times, however many months they had that coverage. In that example, they'd have to pay $600 back. On the flip side of that, if a consumer uses less of the APTC, for example, they think they're gonna spend or make 30,000, but they only make 20, when they file their tax insurance or their federal tax return, they would receive the difference as a refundable credit. Hey, health insurance brokers in Nevada, are you ready for an amazing open enrollment in 2023? Protect Health, the largest on-exchange individual agency in the state, is looking for new talent to add to our team. We are a Nevada HealthLink preferred broker. We're looking for smart, talented, and motivated brokers who want to make more money and build their book of business. We pay the highest commissions available and have access to all of the major health carriers in the state, both on and off exchange. We'll show you how to double or even triple your commissions by doing what you're already doing, and we'll even provide the tools to do it. We'll let you focus on building your business, not ours, by making your phone ring. That means no more stress-inducing call blitz sessions and no more cold calls ever. Learn more at appointnevada.com. We already know what you can do. Let us show you what we There's also cost-sharing reductions. Some consumers who apply for coverage through marketplaces may qualify for APD, who qualify for APDC may also qualify for cost-sharing. To be eligible for cost-sharing based on income, consumers must have a household income between 100 and 250% of the federal poverty level. This did not change with the ARPA law. That's remained the same. So if their income is under 100% or over 250, they would not qualify for any cost sharing unless they were declined Medicare, not Medicaid, sorry. They must be eligible for the APTC. Obviously you can't get the cost sharing if you're not eligible for the tax credit. And they must enroll in a silver plan only through the marketplace to qualify for cost sharing reduction. The reason for this is, is because a silver plan with cost sharing reductions literally becomes a better plan than the gold plan standard, or even in some cases, the platinum plan, because the cost sharing would reduce their deductibles, co-insurance and co-pays to less than what the gold plan might also might, might otherwise offer. There are special benefits for cost sharing reductions for Alaskan Indians and American natives. Those Alaskan Indians and American natives with incomes between 100 and 300% can enroll in zero cost sharing plans through the marketplace and have zero out-of-pocket costs. No deductibles, no co-payments, no insurance, co-insurance when they get care. That means that they're in the hospital, they go to the doctor, they go to a specialist, they get prescriptions, all of those expenses are zero dollar. So as long as their income is within 300% of the federal poverty level, they qualify for that. They must be a member of the recognized tribe and able to prove it. These consumers at any income level can enroll in a limited cost sharing plan through the marketplace with no out-of-pocket costs when they have care from a recognized tribal care provider. So that means that no matter what their income is, if it's 400%, they would still get free care paid for by the FFM, or I'm sorry, by the federal system or the state-based system, uh, or you know, in that case, whatever the, the carrier is, or the care through the tribal care provider. Special benefits for them uh, in, it also include zero cost sharing plans um, in any plan category. So it doesn't matter if they buy bronze, silver, gold, platinum, it's zero, 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 zero. So in these cases, chances are you're going to sell Alaskan Indian American native consumers a bronze plan. In most cases, there is no reason to sell them anything higher. It, again, it's important they must be currently active and recognized in tribal council to qualify, and the marketplace at, may ask for proof of tribal membership. Okay, as far as applying through the marketplace for coverage. First step is when to enroll. We'll go over that in a second. Second, how to enroll. And third, the enrollment assistance, marketplace call center and in-person help, i.e. broker. 
Eligible consumers can enroll in or change marketplace plans during the annual or OEP or AEP. It's usually OEP, open enrollment period, or during certain special enrollment periods. There's one exception to that with American Indian and Alaskan natives consumers. Those consumers can enroll in marketplace plans throughout the year at any time. They don't need an OEP or an SEP. They can change as they want month to month if they choose. In the FFM in most states, individuals and families, the OEP starts on November 1st and ends on December 15th. That is the only time during the year, barring certain circumstances that create what's called a special enrollment period that consumers can enroll in health insurance. In most cases, coverage would begin January 1st for consumers who enroll by December 15th. Consumers have the option of in-person assistance. This is an in-person assister, usually a broker, who works with them either face-on-face, face-to-face, or one-on-one, through Zoom, or even on the telephone, and helps enrollees in submitting their marketplace eligibility applications. That's where brokers come in. That is you, the the in-person assister. They can also call in a marketplace approved in-person person, like I think they're called navigators um, or assisters that help in the community. There are certain community centers that will help with that. Uh, Those can also help such as, um, and agents and brokers are included in that as well. Um, Navigators, certified application counselors. Consumers can use their state-based website or the FFM website to search for a list of people and organizations who can help them apply, pick a plan and enroll in coverage. Again, that's you as the broker. In most cases, they're going to be choosing. They want somebody who has absolutely zero interest in, you know, anything but the plan that's right for them. For coverage to become effective, consumers almost always have to pay their first month's premium directly to the insurance company by that deadline. Usually the deadline is the month, end of the month prior to coverage becoming active. During open enrollment, it may change a little bit in some states, but that's generally the rule. Consumers must pay the premium each month or they could lose coverage. Issuers of individual and family marketplace plans must accept at least three, at least these, I'm sorry, three, at least these payment methods. They must accept paper check, cashier's check, money order, EFT or electronic funds transfer, or a general uh, purpose prepaid debit card, but they will not and cannot accept gift cards. They also cannot ever accept cash and no, a broker can never accept cash on behalf of the consumer. Some may also accept online credit or debit card payments, again, but no company will accept cash or gift cards as payments. Talking a little bit about Medicaid and the marketplace. Medicaid is government health insurance usually managed by the state. Medicaid and CHIP provide free or low cost health coverage to millions of Americans, including most of the low income people, families and children pregnant women, the elderly, and people with disabilities. Some states have expanded their Medicaid programs to cover all people at or below the 133% of the federal poverty level. The states that you see on your left that are in blue have extended their Medicaid. The states that you see in yellow have not. Consumers who are eligible for Medicaid or CHIP are generally not eligible for financial assistance through the marketplace, and they can never have both plans. So. That's the determination you have to make as a broker. You usually are not going to be able to help them enroll in Medicaid, generally speaking, and you won't get paid for it either. Um, But you do definitely want to help them through the process so that if Medicaid declines them, you can enroll them in a health plan. Um, Again, generally brokers and agents should refer consumers directly to Medicaid and not manage these enrollments on their own. It's also important to note that consumers close to the age of 65 who are applying through coverage through a marketplace need to know about the benefits of enrolling in Medicare as soon as they become available. It becomes available to them as soon as they're eligible. If they don't sign up for Medicare during their initial enrollment period and don't have job or group-based coverage, they could pay a huge, huge penalty. They cannot have marketplace coverage if they're eligible for Medicare. And if they do, they'll end up having to pay their entire um, assistance, their uh, advanced premium tax credit back on their taxes. So you always wanna make sure that you're doing the right thing by a consumer if they're eligible for Medicare. Do not sign them up. um, And if they are not yet available and will be soon, make sure you tell them they have to change. Consumers who already have Medicare, like I said, generally can't enroll in marketplace plans because it's against the law. 
for them to have both insurance coverages and for the, co the companies to sell it to them. Consumers who don't sign up for Medicare during the IEP and don't have group-based coverage, like I mentioned, um, may have higher premiums and penalties to pay later. With job-based coverage, many, most Americans actually have health, ins health insurance through their employer or another family member's employer. Consumers who are eligible for job-based or group coverage do not qualify for financial assistance through the marketplace unless their job-based job coverage is considered unaffordable or doesn't meet certain standards. It is really important because the last thing you want to do is provide a consumer with an advanced premium tax credit or cost sharing that will end up having to be paid back in full when they file their taxes. So it's something, there's a calculator built into most exchanges that will let you determine if they qualify or not. This comes into play a lot where families um, may have a primary person who gets insurance free through their provider, but the company doesn't pay for the family members and those family members need coverage, they may or may not qualify on the exchange. Now that law is currently being discussed in Congress. It might be changed by the time you're watching this, but for now that's how it stands. There is also short-term limited duration insurance, usually called short-term. First of all, short-term is limited duration. It's a type of health insurance that is designed to fill temporary gaps in coverage. Many brokers sell this as primary insurance. It's not a good idea. In many states, they can only have it for six months. And what people do is enroll in different companies sometimes to get around the rule. And if they end up getting sick or injured, they may not be covered. Generally, short-term plans offer coverage with an individual transitioning from one plan to another, a person moving from one state to another, a person who is waiting for the open enrollment period who maybe forgot to enroll. Definitely, that's a, a valid option for short-term. They are exempted from the federal definition of individual health insurance coverage, and they aren't subjected to the individual market provisions either. Short-term plans are not considered minimal essential coverage. They're not on the marketplace. They're not sold. Um, through the marketplaces and they don't qualify for tax credits. They are they are and should never be considered primary healthcare solutions. There are also what are called limited benefit and defined benefit plans. Plans like this are not sold through the marketplaces just like short term, but these plans may offer a solution for consumers who get little assistance or no assistance at all. Consumers who may not get a premium, an advanced premium tax credit and that makes their insurance literally too expensive for them to afford. Also people who don't get enough cost sharing and cannot afford um, certain medical coverages. Typically consumers should go with defined benefit plans that, can, that contain what's called RBRVS squared scales and not a set benefit amount. RBRVS is considered the Medicare rate. So for example, a plan would cover the full amount of a specific surgery. Some plans will say, I'm only gonna pay $25,000 if you have open heart surgery. Well, we know that's not gonna cover open heart surgery. Other plans will cover the entire surgery based on the usual and customary expense of that surgery, RBRBS squared. The plan should have that basis scale in it as, if it's gonna be used as primary health insurance. Consumers should choose plans only recognized as health insurance by their department or division of insurance in their state. If it is not listed as health insurance, it shouldn't be used as primary coverage. Limited benefit plans and non-recognized plans are considered supplement insurance. They should not be sold as primary health solutions in any case. People are going to be very angry if somebody has sold that plan, that, that plan to them and they go to the hospital and owe $300,000 when they get out. So again, look for a defined benefit plan that has that RBRVS to avoid that. Some key points to remember. A marketplace is a way for a qualified individual or family to find them by health insurance. The open enrollment for individuals runs from November 1st to December 15th of the year prior to the year the coverage begins. The enrollment period dates in some state-based mar marketplaces do vary. Consumers may enroll or change plans during an SCP if they qualify. Special enrollment periods, again, family changes, immigration changes, job changes may qualify people for a special enrollment period. States have flexibility to customize their own marketplace. Some do, and they do vary greatly in some cases from the FFM or federal marketplace. An example of that is Oregon. Their rules, dates, and everything else vary greatly. 
Individuals and households may be eligible for lower costs on their monthly premiums and out-of-pocket costs. Always important to make sure they, if they qualify for savings, we get it to them. And finally, for more information, consumers, agents, and brokers should always contact either their state-based exchange or the federal exchange if they have questions. Don't, don't wing it, don't fly by and see if you get, you know, figured out where you're trying to do it. Ask questions, do it right. So if you have any questions for this training, since this was not done live, you are more than welcome to write us at info at protecthealth.com. We answer that email within 24 hours in most cases. We'd be happy to answer any questions you have. If you're looking to get enrolled with any carriers, uh, change carriers, we offer uh, some amazing commission rates above street on most carriers. So, um, you know, if you have any questions, email us, let us know. And I do want to thank you for attending this training. And like I said, we're there if you need help. Thank you so much.